One of your other goals is communication, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But the prior councils for me have really have did three real, other than becoming functional, they brought three big changes to the city that create, that mean the next, I think, eight to 10 years in Littleton are gonna be periods of huge change. So, and I don't actually, I'm not confident I have the order of events right. Um, but the first thing the city did is it passed a, a sales tax increase. And the city has gone from being kind of resource poor to what I would call resource okay. And a lot of that money is earmarked for infrastructure within the city, but infrastructure is a lot of what cities do. And so it fits with our mission and, and, and uh, you know, the roads in front of my house are getting repaid. And so first, the first thing changes happen with the city is the city has gone from being really resource poor to being able to adequately staff itself and, and, and do the work of itself. The second big thing that the city um, did is we, they, this is before me, passed the affordable housing ordinance. And that created a policy tool for uh, us to address at least one of the biggest problems facing the whole Denver metro area, which is housing's not affordable. And it's a, not uh, a hugely powerful policy tool. Essentially, what, what I, the way I see it is, is it creates a revenue stream for, this, for the city to pass on to the South Metro Housing Authority to, to reinvigorate their work around building new housing. They, they, they just opened with the um, overview of Progress Park. That was their first new building in I think 15 years. And now we have a revenue stream to keep doing that type of work. And we, this year, we already on my time on the council, we've, we've agreed to give more money to South Metro Housing Authority so they can buy more land to do, to do more stuff. The third big thing that the city council did, again, before my time, was passed uh, the uniform, uniform Land Use Code. And that before that code was passed, development in Littleton was very challenging. And the story on the street, the story that was told to me was, any development that happened in Littleton was despite the city, not because of the city. Mm -hmm. And now we have a, a regulatory framework that makes development much easier. And there are people who would disagree with that, whether that's the right thing. But it absolutely shot the starter's gun in terms of developers starting to um, build new things that come to us with new, new um, um, opportunities. The current council is starting to uh, engage in um, being more... Uh, uh, using incentives to bring businesses into the city. We passed one of the first incentives in a while to bring in a, a bar and restaurant number 38 at the, um, over in Littleton Village. But that's, in my mind, a minor tool compared to the massive change that's going to be coming with the Uniform Land Use Code. And so there's just a lot of change going on in the city. And that, in my mind, reinvigorates the reason why your work is really, really important and to have your, your voice here in that stuff. So there, uh, Pauline has already mentioned that we've also made a few small changes, well, a couple big changes to, to this committee. One is um, this committee, um, or, or the predecessors to this committee, um, were very clear that the formal requirements for boards and commissions around uh, public meetings and so forth was kind of constraining. We weren't able to get rid of all those requirements, but one thing we did do is change these to study sessions, which make them a little less formal. Um, well, and it's up to the chair now for him, uh, or if he's the chair, whoever's chair, I guess I don't, sorry, take that back, whoever's chair to decide on whether they wanna have public comment. But the city is trying to listen to, to, to the next gen and try to make things easier. Also, the size of the committee has been kind of uh, resized to match other, um, boards within, within the city. Um, and the name of the, uh, your name has been changed to a board. So, so there's, you're coming, this is a period of change, but I think this is a new committee. And I think in the big picture, it's a new committee. And I think one of the challenges in front of you is figuring out what is the right mechanism to give feedback to the city on things that are happening. Cause a lot of things are going to be happening. And I think really quickly, and, and I met with Andrew and I'll meet, and I'll meet with uh, Colleen afterwards and about kind of how do we, and I met with the city manager of kind of how do we create a, a, a system where you're regularly asked to provide feedback on what's going on in the city. And I, I want to work, we're going to work on that. 
One of the things we heard when we interviewed um, you guys for the new boards and commissions, and we heard from the, the people who were re-interviewing for positions, is that everybody asked for more engagement with the city council and more opportunities to communicate with the city council. The city council heard that and is working on kind of changing how we organize, not how we organize, but how we schedule things and how we ask for boards and commissions to, to, to give us feedback. So, so how the council works with you is, is also changing as, as all these other things are changing. So in my mind and in my experience on the, on the school board, the most important thing that boards do is serve as tools for communication and that we, you guys are going to be the informed people in your communities around what's going on in the city and know, you know, people are going to come to hopefully come to you and ask, you know, literally like my mother-in-law, what is going on in this corner? Why is there more construction? And you may, you'll be like, I have no idea, but you know who to ask him. Right. And who to ask could just be me, because then I'll ask Mike or, <laughs> you know, through this time, as you get to know people on the staff, you're going to get to know who to call and who to where to find out or where to look on this. And there's going to be presentations to you over time where people just talk about what's going on in the city. And, and so you're going to be a, a key tool for communicating to to, you, to the community around what's what's going on. And that's kind of the low bar for what would be a successful board. The next thing that we want to do is um, make the city be not um, opaque to you. Like, how does this city work? And through getting to know me and getting to know other people who work at the city, it's it's hopefully becomes um, uh, more familiar and, and you just know how the city works. And, and part of that may be um, in the next, you know, one of one of the one of the next gen members is is now a city council member. Part of that may be um, helping you prepare to be on the city council because councils always have to be doing succession planning in my mind. Um, and so, and, and, and again, having good people on council, the elected people makes a difference for the city. And I, like I said, uh, 10 years ago or eight years ago when I was a, a council, a board, a school board member, it was clear that the council did not have good people or the people they did have couldn't work together in a good way. And so it's really important to have good people. Um, so, um, and then, but hopefully we get to the place where we can create, uh, tools for you to provide kind of regular feedback to the city around what people are thinking about. And one of the things that the prior, uh, next gen committee has been working on, and you guys, uh, can choose to continue to work on is having a town hall where we create one, uh, event where people can kind of gather information at the same time. I want you to know that the council and, and I am going to try to work with the leadership on this committee to create opportunities for you to provide feedback kind of as things come up. For example, the, low, uh, the downtown Littleton plan is, start, is going to be discussed by the council in the next month. And there's going to be a couple opportunities for you guys to, as members of the public to um, 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 see those plans and and I don't know if we're going to get to the place where you can like let write a city council memo, but I want us to definitely be at a place where after you guys see those presentations, you have my phone number and we have a conversation about what you think of those things. So, um, so those are the things that we're working on. The last thing I want to talk about is that, you know, the council tried um, a couple years ago to give this committee a charge around what kind of information they wanted from this committee. And I just want to read what the council asked of this committee a couple years ago. I think it was two years ago. Uh, March 23. March 23. Yeah. One year ago. One year ago. So develop strategies for attracting young professionals to live in Littleton. I think one of the things you probably know is Littleton is an old community, right? The demographic looks a lot more like me than it does like you. And making this attractive people for a diverse population in, in all different ways, including age, is definitely a goal of the council. Recommending attributes and strategies, the ongoing vit vitality of Littleton with regard to attractions, placemaking opportunities citywide with specific emphasis on downtown. Specific feasibility strategies would be identified when possible. Develop policy recommendations on a topic of the committee's choice consistent with the city's priorities, housing, safety, economic development, infrastructure, and the environment. And develop strategies for broad broader civic engagement with Littleton. Focus areas suggested by council members 
who half of them are now gone, or, but not intended to be specific direction, include develop civic education structure and capacity at all levels of youth and young adults, develop civic, civic leadership academy, which potentially with ACC, and develop recruitment strategies to gain more involvement with authorities, boards and commissions, and other boards of community involvement. So those are some of the ideas the council had last year. And I, I can give this to you, obviously, reading to you really fast is pulling up stick with you so much. I'll, I'll email it out to everybody. Yeah. The last thing I want to say that I haven't said is that so one of the big changes that I see happening in this city is, is you know, after the tragic death of Liam Stewart, the, um, the momentum in the city to become more walkable and bikeable has, has grown. And that is definitely a priority of the council. And it's something we're thinking about, but it's how we're going to do that is only kind of slowly emerging. And so um, I think that is definitely a priority of the council and, and we're spending money on it and doing things, but we're definitely not done figuring out what that looks like. And so that's a, an important issue in front of the city. So um, I'm hoping when we get to uh, getting to know each other, I'll actually tell you a little bit about myself instead of just, <laughs> um, but not surprisingly, I have been a professor because I like to be a sage on the stage. So, that's it. Thank you. Did I beat Steve? You, well, what do you mean by beat? <laughs> was I faster than Steve? You gave him a room for his money. How about that? Was, was that 25 minutes worth? It was not. Okay. Well, I would say it's 25 minutes worth then. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, Councilmember Reichardt uh, alluded to how uh, you as a board will get information to council on what you've been working on. And right now what we're looking at is um, at minimum a twice yearly kind of summary report, you know, done um, for what we've covered in the first quarter, second quarter kind of thing. And that's something that you will put together as a board uh, and present that um, to city council via the city manager's office. Um, is that correct? Mike? Yeah, via your liaison for uh -huh. the city manager. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, and is Danielle still going to be the liaison or no? no? So we don't know who that's going to be. Okay. So you'll have a new liaison. And I'll be here throughout. And I'll be here whenever Mike asks me to. <laughs> <laughs> um, or my deputy city clerk, Wendy Shea, will be here. Um, you'll have one of us uh -huh. if needed. And I would say, again, back on that the interaction of the city council with the boards and commissions is changing. So I'm on, I'm assigned essentially two boards and commissions. I'm assigned to you guys and I'm assigned to the transportation mobility board, the two most extreme different boards in terms of how <laughs> they operate. Um, um, it, it, not in a bad way, but it's really different. And, and so, you know, the city council has already kind of scheduled a meet, a joint meeting with mm -hmm. that, um, um, their board or their, their board. Their board. Uh, and, and I'm not confident that was a regular thing in the past. And so the, the council is trying to figure out more ways to make sure communication mm -hmm. happens. So yeah, absolutely. Andrew did represent this this uh, committee last year with the council. Um, it was, I thought it was a great meeting. They, they, and of those things that were listed, you know, one of them was, you know, uh, recommend stuff for the council and they did. They brought a recommendation and it was a, a great, great topic of discussion. Hopefully this year, whatever we you decide on, and I say we, but it's really you, whatever you decide on, we'll, we'll go with just as, just as well and receive just as well. Yeah, so just to be really clear, I'm not a member of this committee. I'm the liaison. I don't have a vote. I obviously have a voice because I raise it all the time, <laughs> but um, you guys are the are the board and it's your decision around what, what, what you do. And once you have a chair, you can tell us to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> But before we get to chair and vice chair, I'm going to do some talking. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, over the past uh, several years, um, the city manager's office, the attorney's office, and the clerk's office have put together um, trainings for our quasi-judicial boards. Uh, for those that don't know what that is, um, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then also for our advisory boards, because there's a little bit different level of training. There are some components that cover both. We're going to talk about Colorado open meetings law. And we're going to talk about Colorado open records. Um, 
And we're going to talk about city issued email addresses, which you will all have. Um, I just got them yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to farm them out to everybody with instructions. Um, and so we're going to talk about that and use of that um, moving forward. So, um, and I'm, I'm not going to insult you by reading the slides to you. Uh, I will provide these to you in a PDF after the meeting. Uh, we're going to just do a high level overview of what they are. You can read along if you like. Um, and so just to kind of cover the roles of our boards and commissions, um, advisory boards really the first thing we need to understand is they serve at the pleasure of council as an arm of council, bless you. Um, so your priority first and foremost is to follow direction from council to achieve those goals of council. And while you are all citizens and you are here to serve the community, you actually do report to council you're following them. You will have some citizens come and tell you that that's not true. You work for them. You work for council mm -hmm. um, in, in, a, in a very broad sense. So just to get that clear, uh, if you become part of a quasi-judicial board down the line, those are boards that actually have uh, decision-making capacity. They operate by motions, seconds, votes, actions an advisory board operates by reaching consensus so you're not actually making motions to to move something forward you don't need a second you don't need a majority vote uh, you don't need a quorum to hold a meeting um, so any questions on that before we move on so this slide just covers a little bit the role of city council they are our local legislative body they are the body, they act by ordinance. If they are changing our city code, our city code are our laws for the city. Um, and those are over and above whatever state statute is. As a home rule municipality, we can make laws that are very specific to our municipal boundaries that may be different than at the state level. Our uh, home rule charter actually serves as our local constitution. It's that very high level, um, provides the framework for how we as a government work. Um, and the only way to change our charter is by a vote of our registered electors. So either council can put forward a question on a ballot to change something in our charter, or it can be done by a citizen initiative to add something and through a petition process, but that is the only way the charter gets updated <clears throat> is through elections. The city code, that is where uh, council is gonna act by ordinance to change various sections of the code. Um, oftentimes that is to bring it in line with state statute. Um, you know, right now we're in the middle of, of legislative session uh, downtown, so there will be some changes coming forth. Um, we try to stay on top of that so we're not scrambling after the fact. Um, we're trying to stay at least current and possibly a little bit ahead of the state for our locality. <clears throat> oh, I just passed right past Mike's slides. <laughs> Mike is actually going to take the next three slides right. and talk to you a little bit about um, this whole process. Yeah, so um, the city is kind of you know, driven and organized behind the vision, right? And, uh, and and we call it a comprehensive plan. A few years back, we adopted the Envision Littleton plan. Um, and really, it you know uh, provides a, a, an aspirational statement that we can get behind and kind of make decisions through. Um, so we actually, in, in this next year, we'll, we'll do a, uh, a completed update to the, the comprehensive plan. And so much of this will be up for discussion again, and we'll figure out you know, kind of how we go from there. But this, think of this that as the high level, and then, then we, we kind of move down into to other things. So, you know, uh, Councilman Reichert mentioned the Transportation Mobility Board. Um, well, when it comes to transportation in our city, what guides us there? We have what's called the Transportation Master Plan. 
Uh, and that helps, you know, really lay out the groundwork for where we want to devote resources and efforts to, to that area of, of, of uh, what we do. We have, um, we're working on an arts and culture master plan right now. So we have a, a number of documents that kind of fall below that comprehensive plan that covers everything, the big umbrella, and fit underneath it in specific areas of responsibility. Um, the next thing coming is the strategic plan. So basically, uh, we've asked council to give us some some real guidance on, on how we should make sure we're, we're you know, funneling resources towards. So you see the dots on the screen there. Um, basically, that's what council's role is in each one of those columns. So under the column of outcomes, we ask council to tell us what, 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 what they want the city of Littleton to look like. When they, when they, when they look for results, what, what, what are the kinds of things they see? Obviously, they're heavily involved in identifying and, and adopting outcomes for the city. Um, you know, really, really, that's what drives you know, our, our vision. Um, now, under the outcomes, we have two to three year initiatives. So from a budget perspective, what are we putting you know, the majority of our budget into each year? Um, and in the two to three year initiatives, you see a little bit less responsibility from the council there and a little bit more responsibility from the staff. Um, and then that leads into what are we working on right now? How am I deciding what's important and prioritize my day, my work day today, my work plan for this month, that kind of thing. So the department work plans each year, um, really council has very little um, uh, uh, it, you know, involvement in the department work plans annually. Um, and the staff have a huge, huge amount of responsibility for that work plan. But really, the work plan is based off the two to three year initiatives the council's kind of highlighted, all based off the outcomes, all based off of that comprehensive plan. And that's kind of where we go. So when Council Riker talked to you about the, the guidance that they gave you, Robert, when, when, when <laughs> Dr. Robert talked to you, Robert. <laughs> when, when, when Robert talked to you about uh, uh, the guidelines that were given to the, the Next Generation Advisory committee last year, um, it, it really is, is kind of funneling, what is this group, you know, you know, got to focus on whatnot. Now, within that, there's lots of latitude. Thankfully, we don't, we don't, we don't uh, micromanage to a level to say, here's what you should do on everything. So, you, you know, the last group that was here, um, and, and, and Lauren and Andrew can you know, attest to it, you know, they, they, they veered in their own direction. And you guys will too. You'll figure out kind of how you want to do. I'd love it if you stuck right on what council gave you guidance for. That makes my life really easy. Don't worry about my life being easy. You guys do you, um, and and you'll figure out what you want to, what's fulfilling and whatnot. If council doesn't like it, they'll point somebody else to the board, right? <laughs> um, but all in all, um, that kind of gives you an idea of, of city governance. You know, coming down to to how we we. Are you going to tell them who you are and what you do? We, well, we have introductions coming up, okay, right? All right. Yeah. After orientation and training. We do. We, okay. we have <laughs> introductions after that. Yeah. Look at there. Yeah. And then I, I would just add under department work plans, um, those are actually part um, have become part of our budgeting process. So when uh, we as uh, leadership members in the city department heads are um, putting in our ask for next year's budget, whether that be um, more staffing or resources, that all ties into kind of that one year capacity. Um, and as Mike was saying, when um, councils focus towards bike and pedestrian safety shifted, we had to look at what some of those one year um, department work plans were and move resources and say, okay, what can we give up right now? What can we push back? And so it's more than just dots on a page and words. We're really looking at how are we funding this? What is absolute? And so when we take a, a, a budget to council and they do their budget workshop, they're really looking at all of those asks and how does this tie into that one year, that two to three year, that 20 year. And so, um, did I miss anything on that? No, that's good. Well, at the bottom of the screen there, you see outcome indicators. Basically think of that like a dashboard, right? So, so we're gonna try really hard to do meaningful things. Um, uh, but trying hard isn't, isn't good enough. We actually have to yield some results, make something happen, right? Um, deliver actual recommendations and whatnot. So um, along the way, the, the city as a whole and every department has indicators they show that kind of allow people to, to measure, are we on track? Are we doing the things that we say we're gonna do? 
Um, and we'll do the same thing with this committee. So twice a year, we'll give a kind of a written update to council, at least twice a year, mm -hmm. and at least once a year, there'll be that joint kind of meeting um, where council gets a chance to meet directly. And then, of course, every meeting, uh, um, Robert's here to, to have the one-on-one -on -one interaction and, and be that liaison between between this body and the, and the council. Um, and so between all that, that's how we'll indicate that we're actually doing something. Yeah. Anything on this piece before we move on? Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, so this just covers a little bit um, the role of different staff. So your departmental staff, whether that be your staff liaison or um, other staff that's helping to prep things for you. Some of this is very specific to our quasi boards, like the first two bullet points. Um, any, and I don't want to jump too far ahead to open meetings law, but anytime something that you're doing needs to be noticed to the public, my office is going to step in and help you with that. Um, we will help with agendizing things. Now, normally the chair is going to work with the staff liaison uh, to develop an agenda to put items um, forth for the board. If there are certain things you want to see on the agenda, you're going to have to coordinate with your chair um, to see when that can come forward. Um, you know, we want to be very thoughtful about um, waiting our agenda so that we're not overpopulating one agenda to the to the level that you're only having tiny little conversations about things and you can't actually get any momentum. Um, <clears throat> department staff, so your liaison is going to help you with your reports that are going to go to council. Uh, and, you know, we're always going to be there. Any questions, concerns, um, I have a philosophy about questions. There is no stupid question except the one you don't ask that you should have. Um, you know, uh, we've all asked those questions a hundred times, right? Uh, the city clerk's, clerk's office will make sure that all of your meetings are uh, legally posted um, within the proper timeline, and that's on our city website. And then at the first, our first resolution of every year, we, um, by council action, uh, decide where notice of meetings are going to be posted. And we have three physical locations, which is here, our library and the courthouse, and then also on our website. So the clerk's office will take care of all of that. Um, if meeting minutes are taken for the quasi boards, we make sure those get recorded and are retained in perpetuity. They are um, a permanent retention uh, for this body, we will make sure that the recorded video gets uploaded and is linked properly so that it's there for reference. Um, and then the city attorney's office will step in anytime there's a question on something and, and we need legal advice um, so that we're, we're keeping each one of you uh, free from any kind of uh, possible liability or um, anything, we're keeping the body, we're keeping council safe, and we're keeping the city safe. Okay. Uh, so rules of procedure, we do have some documents. You were all sent to the Boards and Commission's um, handbook, um, which we're going to give you some time to review. There is an acknowledgement page, which I will send out separately for you to electronically sign when you feel comfortable doing <laughs> that, but prior to your next meeting would be um, preferred. Uh, the council follows Robert's rules of orders, although it's a little bit soft around the edges. We like to call it Bob's rules um, because actual Robert's rules, um, parliamentary procedure is very stuffy and very rigid and very boring. Um, both myself and our deputy city clerk are registered parliamentarians. And that's not anything to brag about or sexy, um, but it's necessary. Um, with an advisory board, you're less held by those rules than you are in a decision-making board. Uh, and then we also have council's legislative rules and their standards of conduct and protocol. Those are available online, but what I'll do after this meeting is I will send you an email with links to all the documents that we're referencing in here, the comprehensive plan and all of those things, um, so that you have it all in one place. Just a good idea to kind of read over them become familiar with them. Uh, anything that council holds themselves to, any standard, they expect their boards, commissions, and committees 
to hold themselves to those same standards, okay? Uh, open meetings law, this is the fun stuff. Um, so under open meetings law, any meeting of any government body of which you are one, because you are appointed by our elected body, any meeting of three or more members constitutes a public meeting. It must be noticed, it must be posted, it must be agendized. Um, now, Littleton's a small town. It's possible that three of you could run into each other at King Supers and start up a conversation. Is that a meeting? No. If you start discussing business, it just became a meeting and there is a violation. And the one thing that we really need to be um, cognizant of is any time we potentially violate the open meetings law, we're actually violating public trust. Um, we are working against that goal of transparency that we have, right? We want to conduct business in the open. Um, and so we don't ever want to do anything um, that might put us in a bad light. Now, you know, it's human nature. You may be excited about something that you're working on and start talking about it. Hopefully one person will have the presence of thought to go, you know what, let's save this for when we're in a meeting. Um, so a, a meeting doesn't have to be in person. This could be a three-way phone call. This could be a text chain. This could be an email where you accidentally hit reply all. That constitutes a meeting uh, and does violate the open meetings law. Um, social gatherings uh, don't. Now we do take extra caution when it comes to council. If there is an event happening in town and we know that three or more of them may be in attendance, we post it anyway, just to cover our bases. Um, it just makes good sense. Um, under the open meetings law, every meeting has to be posted not less than 24 hours prior to the meeting. Um, anything less than 24 hours, we have not met our burden, and technically the meeting is not sanctioned and not legal. And that ex it, it includes specific agenda information. The state law also says attachments and documents when applicable or practicable. Um, you often don't have a lot of attachments. You have an agenda with some bullet points, so uh, we're covered there. The other thing you need to be cautious of with open meetings law you have an agenda to work from. If topics come up that are not on the agenda, it's one thing to say, hey, I'd like to have a conversation about this at another meeting. Can we get it on agenda? That's fine. But to start having a conversation about it when it wasn't legally noticed to the public uh, is a violation of state law. Uh, and it also, that leads to diminishing the public trust again and transparency. It's like, because we have citizens that may be waiting for something to come on an agenda. They never see it and then they find out you already had a conversation <clears throat> and they didn't have an opportunity to be present. Um, so just some things we need to be cautious of. Uh, ramifications. Now the first two are certainly more um, tied to a quasi-judicial hearing. If a decision was made at a quasi-judicial hearing, it wasn't uh, adequately noticed, it wasn't agendized, um, any of those things, there can be lawsuits filed, the decision can be overturned, there can be compensatory damages um, to the city. Uh, so we want to avoid that, if at all possible. We want our citizens to trust these boards that, that council has convened, whether you're in an advisory capacity or a quasi-judicial capacity. And frankly, in an advisory capacity, you have a lot more freedom to, to really um, invest your passions and your expertise. Uh, and, and we don't ever want to do anything that puts that level of public trust at risk. Um, it also leads to, if they don't trust you as a board, they're not gonna trust council because council appointed you. They don't trust council, they don't trust the city. 
and it puts everybody kind of at risk. Uh, and, we, and we just don't want to do that. And then the most drastic thing that could happen, and this really does not happen very often, it's happened once in the almost 13, 14 years I've been with the city, it can lead to someone being removed from a board. Um, so just be very cognizant that uh, being on this board, there are responsibilities that go with that and liabilities. Colorado Open Records Act. Um, as you are working on documents, your actual work product, your sticky notes and your drafts, those technically are not records until it becomes a final draft. When it becomes a final draft, it's a record. Emails are always a record regardless of the content. So we do want you to always use your city assigned email. That is how you will get your meeting information. That is how we will communicate with you about city business. Um, but we want you to be mindful of that, that everything you put in an email can and will become public record. Now, is it ever gonna get requested? Possibly not, but um, I will say as the keeper of all the records for the city, council email, emails get requested all the time. Um, now, fortunately, a lot of the ones of theirs that get requested are attorney-client privileged, um, so we don't have to release them. Yours necessarily won't have that same protection. Colleen recently received a request for a copy of my calendar from a resident I've never met before. And she provided them copies of my calendar and the appointments I went to, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so avoid liability, avoid losing that trust, um, commit to transparency, uh, familiarize yourself with our city charter, any code sections that might be specific to next gen. Our online code is very easy to search and it is updated in real time. So when council passes an ordinance, the day that ordinance is effective, it is live online. We self codify in house. So that allows us to always be up to date. Know the limits of your authority. Know what the goal of this board is. If you're ever in question, your staff liaison, city manager's office, and certainly your council liaison, okay? Um, avoid any conflicts of interest and those ex parte communications, right? Where you're out in public, you may be talking to somebody that we're trying to work with in a project, just don't do it outside of an open meeting. Uh, always work through staff and when in question, that's why we have an attorney's office, okay? Any questions or comments? Okay, well, that's awesome. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn that off. Did you have any questions or comments, gentlemen, either of you, anything I didn't cover that I should have touched on? I feel like I've made plenty of comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robert. Okay. Thank you, Colleen, for putting that together. I feel like I need a refresher for you. So and I'll, I'll put those together as a PDF and send them out to all of you so you have them. Um, and if you have questions that come up at any time, not just tomorrow or next week, but at any time that you're on the board, feel free to reach out. And if I'm not the right person to answer your question, I'll get it to the person who is the right person to answer your question. Okay, um, what I wanna do now is we're gonna do a quick round table. We're gonna do some introductions. Um, for the board members, even those that are returning, um, I would want you to um, let us know who you are, a little bit about your background, why you wanted to be part of this board, what you're excited about with the board, um, any of those kinds of things, okay? I think, uh, I think you guys have to introduce yourselves too. Well, I was gonna start with us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, most of y'all know me. I met some of you in interviews and I've known some of you for a while. Colleen Norton, I'm the city clerk. I've been with the city for 13-ish change years. Um, and uh, in case you can't tell, I'm kind of a stickler for open meetings law and parliamentary procedure and records. It's kind of my thing. It's the thing I nerd out on. <laughs> but if you have a clerk that doesn't nerd out on that, there's a problem. <laughs> so.
So, um, you know, and, and it's, 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 it's stressful. There's a lot of work, but anytime um, I can find an answer for someone or help someone with something, it makes my whole day. So um, I love what I do. I love Littleton um, and hopefully I'll be here another well, maybe not 13 years. I'd like to be retired by then, but but some time. <laughs> so I'm Mike Jen, and uh, I've been with City of Littleton for, for one year this month. Um, I love it. Uh, my family lives here in Littleton, and uh, my oldest daughter is on the debate team with Jack at Heritage High School. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, uh, we are parents of two, so I have a Euclid Middle School uh, son as well. Uh, and... I get to work um, in the city manager's office, which um, for someone not in city government might not know what that is, right? But basically the city manager is one of three positions that are actually appointed by the city council. So the city council gets to hire three people. One's the presiding judge and uh, um, the other is the city attorney and the third is the city manager. In the private sector, you might think of the council kind of like the, the, the corporate board and they get to hire a CEO. So the city manager is kind of like the CEO. Um, and that city manager is technically responsible for all the other hires in the city. Um, and so I, I get to be um, Jim Becklenburg's deputy. So when he's not here, I get to step in and fill in for him. I get to work with all the departments in the city. Um, you know, departments range from uh, the city clerk's office as a department to the police department, right? So there's a police chief that runs the police uh, you know, department. And then so those department directors um, get supported directly by the, someone in the city manager's office. Um, and uh, so, you know, Robert was kind of joking when he said, I'll ask Mike. Um, but the truth is, is, is the staff does um, all, all this work, right? So we do have a lot of access to this information. And so if you have questions about anything going on in the city, really, you're in an awesome position to be able to get quick, easy answers throughout the, throughout, you know, the month, anytime, not just waiting for a meeting. Um, but my job from the city manager's perspective um, on this specific board is to help you be successful and to, to, to help you have meaningful experiences and, and uh, to learn. You know, some of you will go on to serve in other capacities in the city. Um, some of you will not. You'll just be awesome residents the rest of your life, which is cool, too. Um, and I really want to help you be successful in whatever your goals are um, collectively and individually. I'm glad, glad to help, help work with you and help you succeed. And, and I will tell you he means that because uh, I am a direct report to Mike. Um, I am one of the departments that he manages. And Mike always says he wants to be a good partner. He's never directing you what to do. He is right there with you. So trust. I'm just saying. Hey, oh, so one personal thing, and hopefully you guys share some personal things when you get introduce yourself. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I, you know, people set New Year's resolutions, that kind of stuff. So I did not set New Year's resolutions this year, but I woke up on New Year's Day full of vigor and my family's still sleeping. So I decided to go for a bike ride. It was 20 degrees outside. Um, and, and, uh, so I, you know, suited up whatnot. Um, I moved here a year ago from Arizona and, uh, and something that we did not have in Arizona that you have in abundance here, black ice, <laughs> Um, so I slid my bike and broke my ankle in a couple of places, had surgery. And and, uh, and so even though I didn't know it was a resolution this year, I needed to learn humility and a little bit more empathy. And these first few months have been focused a lot on that. <laughs> um, so I'm wearing tennis shoes to help accommodate my, my big ankle. <laughs> uh, but but really, I'm, I'm vertical. For, for a couple of months, I was not. But anyways, I like to ride bikes. I'm getting ready to get back to that. I'm so glad I'm here. And I learned not to ride bikes when there's black ice on so, um, uh, so I'm uh, from a kind of older Colorado family. My dad graduated from South High School in Denver, and my parents met at DU. And I grew up kind of on the western slope, a town called Craig, which I encourage none of you to ever go to. It's <laughs> kind, of an, kind of an armpit. Um, and then I went to high school down in Colorado Springs. Um, and after high school, I went to Boulder. I was in the Peace Corps for a while and then spent t uh, 10 years kind of going to grad school in D.C. and L.A. And I, um, now I work as an education policy researcher. And so I do things like today, I spent, I'm doing a study for the U.S. Department of Ed on how school districts spend their money. And so I spent a lot of time today working on that. Um, tomorrow, I'm doing an evaluation for 
the state of Texas on uh, a thing called communities and schools. Um, so tomorrow I'll be writing up my notes from that. So those are the kind of things I do. I work from home. My home is over by Kettering Park. I've been living there for about 12 years. Um, I have two daughters uh, that went to Centennial, Euclid, and then one went to Heritage and one went to uh, Hilton High School. And now they're both, uh, one's a freshman, one's a sophomore in colleges up in Washington State. One's at Western Washington and one's at Puget Sound. Um, and I've decided that being an elected board council member is kind of my hobby. Um, it's what I, what I do with my spare time. And I, uh, it, uh, I'm thrilled to be able to do this work. It makes me feel like I'm engaged in something bigger than myself. Um, and then quite frankly, you know, I, 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 um, you know, at 58, that's how old I am, you don't always get an opportunity to learn something brand new. And being on the city council, I get to learn something brand new. And um, people have to be nice to me because uh, <laughs> I'm on the council. He brings candy. Who yeah, wouldn't be nice? Brings council. So, um, but I want—I do—I I do want you guys to communicate with me. So I'm going to give you my cards on the way out. My cell phone is on the back. There's a phone number on here that's not a fake number, but it's a Google number that you are automatically going to go to voicemail. But I get it. And then there's also an email, and I'm checking that email pretty regularly. So um, feel free to, to reach out to me um, for things. Okay. Hi everyone, um, my name is Andrew. Uh, I live in downtown Littleton. Um, this is my second second year in Littleton because I'm originally grew up in Virginia, went to school or college down in Georgia, then um, was blessed to come out here for work. And for me, it's been the most favorite place I've lived. Um, and I've lived all over the US and in Europe. So, so like it's a it's a great place to be. Um, for my profession, I work as an engineer um, with a company right off the mineral. Um, we do stuff mostly in the like criminal justice realm, sort of for mostly DUI and um, domestic violence offenders. We do tech, like work on technology to keep them in check with their parole and with um, the Department of Corrections for not only Colorado, but the entire US and a lot of countries across the world. Um, and I'm just really excited to be back here another year. I was the um, vice chair last year because um, Littleton, I feel like, is at a really crucial point in like the city where there's so much development and so much growth happening. Um, and it's really exciting to be a part of a, a, a group that gets a little bit of the city council's ear to help like shape and voice our opinions on how especially young people want to see the city grow and change and develop um, to make it more hospitable for uh, our lives and for people like us who might be looking for an option in Metro Denver besides just the city of Denver. Uh, so very excited to be back. Nice to meet you all. And what Hey y'all. Um, I never know how to make this short. Uh, I'm Lauren. Um, this will be my fourth year serving on NextGen, which is crazy. Uh, gosh, so I grew up in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I went to Florida State University with an English degree. And since then, 30 years, I've had like eight different careers. Like none of them are related. None of them make sense. The only bottom line is that I love people and I love working with people. So <laughs> that kind of keeps me pretty open. Um, and right now I work at home. Um, my husband was the first hire at a small startup and I kind of jumped in and I wear a lot of hats over there. Um, I'm a bar instructor. So that's kind of my only hobby I have time for um, besides this. Um, I was the coordinator of care and ministry partnerships for Littleton Christian Church, um, which brought me a lot of crossover with here. We served a lot of local organizations like Graceful Cafe, um, North Littleton Promise, uh, Love Inc. So, um, it that was really fun. I'm still really involved with all of those organizations. Um, let's see, I moved to Colorado in 2017 and I was driving around. I lived in Inglewood. I literally signed the lease, walked in, had never been there before. And like, I was like, okay, I guess that's where I'm gonna live. Um, and I was driving around trying to just get my bearings and I stumbled upon Main Street, Littleton. And I'm like, I wanna live there someday. So I'm, I'm so grateful that I was able to. My husband and I bought our house in 2019. We also live near Kettering Park. Um, and we just absolutely love it. We can't imagine a better place to live. Um, it's just great for us. We have a golden retriever and a 14 month old son. Um, so it's been a fun place to grow our family. And it's this, I just think this is so important. I love that Littleton has a next generation advisory board. 
I knew nothing about the city and how the city government worked. And it was really oh, intimidating to me when I started and it still is intimidating to me, but I'm learning and I'm just grateful for that opportunity. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been great. I've just realized that the way the city has defined youth is youth is anybody who was born after I graduated from college. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Mackenzie. I am a Littleton native, so born and raised in Littleton, went to Heritage High School. Um, since then, I've lived all over the place. I went to school in Texas, got a math and Spanish degree. I lived and worked in Spain for a while, and then I, since then, I've lived all over Colorado. And um, now, my husband and I live by Stern Park. We love it. And... Did I say I'm a realtor and interior designer? Realtor and interior designer with my sister, Kaki, who's not here tonight. And um, as a Littleton native, I have 30 years worth of opinions on what Littleton could be doing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I'm really excited to just hopefully help breathe new life into Littleton. We work with a lot of people who see the benefits of moving somewhere like Littleton, but also a lot of people who aren't excited about Littleton. And I think, like you said, Littleton Main Street has a ton of charm and uh, character, and I'd love to see us focus on keeping that character and not copying other communities and being really careful of being unique and different and somewhere that people wanna be. So, um, that's why I'm here. Yeah, I'm hoping to make help make Littleton the next hot spot, and um, also keep some of the things that I loved about growing up in Littleton. So, yeah. Um, well, I'm Jack Haig. Uh, I was uh, born in Lone Tree and spent like my early childhood in Douglas County, um, but then about eight years ago, my family moved to Littleton, um, and I've really enjoyed living here. Uh, but I've spent my whole educational career in LPS. I went to Franklin Elementary and Powell Middle School and um, uh, Heritage High School. And I've also taken classes at ACC and at the Epic Campus. Um, but I am planning next year on going to CU Denver to study uh, education, human development with an emphasis on secondary social studies because I'm a huge like social studies and history and civics and government nerd. Um, and so part of that plays into you know, why I want to be on this committee because I think uh, the role of local government is often underestimated by a lot of young people. Um, and it's important from making sure, you know, the city, um, the city budget stays accountable to making Littleton continue to be environmentally friendly to making it a more bikeable and walkable community are all very important things for the city. Um, and then more about me, like I am the captain of the heritage debate team. Um, I was in the heritage choir for a couple of years um, and both my sisters, or I have two older sisters, um, one of whom lives in Colorado Springs, the other just uh, moved to Denver, so. Well, everything that Jack said about why he wanted to join this board, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy you because that was fantastic. Um, no, uh, but hey everyone, I'm, I'm Ricky Jackson. Um, I am a Littleton resident of going on three years, so not uh, quite as well versed in the area, but I get to make claim that I'm a Colorado native and that we're a dying breed. Um, originally, I am from Monument, Colorado, and if you've ever heard of it, you've definitely driven past it and not recognized it because we were a, a truck stop town for a long, long time. Um, and so I was in high school and we got a Walmart. That was our, our big <laughs> name. Um, and, and truthfully, that was actually something that kind of motivated me as I got a little bit older to want to be part of a community because when you're 16 years old and you have nowhere to go outside of a Walmart, naturally find trouble. Um, and so that was something that was a big motivator for me when I saw, um, you know, moving to Littleton, how I can become more integrated in the community. And um, I now have a 17-month-old daughter. So I feel you with, uh, with the Some little dates. ones. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking too. And, and now my, my thought has changed a little bit more about less about what do I want in a community, but also what can I leave behind for people who um, can stay in the community and be part of the community and feel like from your, the time that you're very young to, you know, wherever you end up, you're part of that the whole way through. And so that was a big motivator for me to, 
to be here and I'm happy to be here and I'm really pumped to see what we do in the coming years with, uh, you know, such a great group of people. So you suggested you might have been a bit delinquent as a, <laughs> as a Walmart as, patron. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, but you, but what, what do you do now? What is your, uh, yeah. So, so now I've, uh, I've since moved on from my delinquent youth and um, <laughs> I'm now in, in human resources. Um, so I have a background in uh, organizational psychology and my, my whole spiel has been, we spend roughly two thirds of our, our life at work. And so we should find ways to not make it suck. And that's what I try to do for, for organizations. Um, and I currently work for an organization called the Casa. Uh, so we do some property uh, management for vacation homes that everyone is welcome to stay at. Just log on to our website. This is a, a spiel here. Um, if you're looking for a nice little getaway, we got some good stuff there. I think that could be a new motto for most companies. It's work, how to not make it suck. <laughs> like um, before we get into nominations for an election um, of board leadership, um, just because a couple of you have mentioned wanting to get more involved uh, in local government, understand it more, uh, because it is kind of a unique animal. Um, it's hard to understand it from the outside. Um, if any of you have heard of or haven't, there is a Littleton Leadership Academy that was started many years ago by three former mayors of the city, uh, and they ran it for quite some time. Then the pandemic hit, it went away. Um, ACC has picked it back up, and it is one day a week for multiple weeks. Uh, and months. yeah, how many months? Well, I don't know, but one day a week. Multiple, multiple months. months, thank yeah, you. Um, and on Fridays, yes. Um, and as part of that, uh, you get insight into all different aspects of city government, um, whether it be the city manager's office or the clerk's office. Um, or the police department. Um, also, uh, if any of you have heard of or thought about or not, uh, the police department does a citizens academy, um, which also would give you some great insight. Um, so just some things to consider. If you want more information, reach out, we'll get that to you. Um, but certainly ways to get more information and more informed. Yeah, I can, I can give you information. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, now I know I said earlier that you act by consensus and we don't really do motions and seconds and votes. Um, this is the one time you will do that when we are nominating board leadership. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is open the floor for nominations for board chair. Um, you can nominate anyone and there is no shame in self nomination. Uh, and what we'll do is We'll continue until we have all the nominations. It may be one, it may be five, I don't know. Um, and then we will do motions and seconds and votes until we come down to a chair. And, and during the motions and seconds part, this, there's discussion available. Mm -hmm. Try to persuade Absolutely each other. not, it's a police state at that point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do we have any nominations for board chair? I'd like to nominate Andrew for board chair. Okay. Are there any other nominations? To nominate Jack. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> anyone else? Okay. Andrew, do you accept the nomination? I accept the nomination. Okay, Jack? Uh, yeah. Okay. Andrew, do you want to say a few words? About uh, yes, yeah. Why, why this is interesting to you and yeah and i was like i feel like uh last year i was the vice chair and i feel like i learned a lot and have got a lot of perspective on what the best way to run the ngab um just because there's there's a lot that's happening we only meet officially once a month um and that seems like a very like seems frequent but in reality it's only 12 times in a in a year period sorry uh, um apologies for that um but i think i, I learned a lot from the chair last year and how to best structure things and sort of like what Robert said of how to actually provide recommendations more frequently um, to the city council and be a voice for young people in the city and the things that we want to see change and or improve. Um, and I feel like that takes like having a lot of coordination and planning, not only on our like collective board, but as specifically as the chair. And I have a lot of experience doing that with many organizations, both in college and now as a young professional. 
I think I can like add value in that way. And having had experience working with a lot of the city council and city staff before, um, a lot of those relationships already exist. So I know who to go to, who to talk to when issues or things come up of who we need in. Okay, Jack? Um, I think just thinking about it for a second, I'm going to withdraw my okay. nomination just because I'm a new leaf to city government, but um, okay. I'm really interested in learning about chair does and awesome. Many. Okay. Um, well, we need to make it official. So a motion to appoint Andrew Allen as chair of next gen. Motion. Thank you. You, you move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's I know. Four years in, Colleen, and I'm so. It's okay. It's okay. I move to to elect to mm -hmm. appoint Andrew as our chair. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Okay. No one opposed. Congratulations, Thank Chair you. Allen. Thank awesome. you. Okay. We're going to go through the same process for vice chair. Do I have any nominations for vice chair? I'll nominate Jack Hay. Okay. Anybody else? Jack, do you accept the nomination? I do accept the nomination, yeah. Okay. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, sure. So um, obviously my first time being on any kind of local government board or committee, but I'm very excited to, you know, see how everything plays out and see how it works. So um, I think really as vice chair, I'm going to be trying to get things in smoothly and also learn from our chair. So. Okay. Do I have a motion to appoint Jack Haig as vice chair? Yeah, I motion to uh, appoint Jack Haig as vice chair. A second? Second. Okay. <laughs> Kenzie, I'll take yours. All in favor? Okay. The vote is unanimous. Congratulations. We have a chair and a vice chair. It is now 7.37 p.m. I'm going to adjourn the transitional meeting. I'm going to call the regular meeting of this board to order at 7.37. I'll do a quick roll call again, and then I am going to hand it over to the chair. Chair Allen? Present. Vice Chair Haig? Present. Member Geber? Present. Member Fleck? Present. Member Jackson? Present. Okay. Congratulations to both of you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm going to leave you. Thanks, Thanks so you. much. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. See you at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see her sooner than that. Yeah. And I'll talk to you tomorrow, Mike. See you. Thank Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Okay, now that we've uh, done roll call, we have the approval of the agenda, which we will need to motion for again. And actually, it's a presidential motion. You can move it if nobody has changes. Okay. Has everyone <laughs> got a chance to look at the agenda? Are there any recommended changes before we move forward? No. Okay, then I will uh, move, uh, have a motion to approve the agenda. For... Approve the agenda. Oh, I can just approve it? Okay, then I approve the agenda for two minutes. Uh, there's no, no public fears, so uh, we'll offer public comment, but I don't think we don't have anyone to take up. So we'll move on to our next agenda item our discussion topics. Um, the first is the board appointees to the Capital Improvement Sales Tax Committee. Is there any? So you mind me just yeah. giving a little explanation? So um, a couple years ago, the, the citizens of, of Wilton were asked to support um, a, a, an additional sales tax to fund capital improvements in the city of Littleton. Um, commonly, it was called the 3A sales tax. Uh, and voters overwhelmingly approved it, which is really, really cool. That the whole public trust thing that Colleen talked about. And we've been able to start doing some significant improvements with many more in store um, in the coming years. Part of that uh, election was that we, the, the voters uh, wanted to see a, an accountability measure in place. So they wanted a capital improvement sales tax committee to be formed um, to review annually how the city had used the, the, the revenues that were raised by this sales tax. Um, so last year was the first year of that committee to be in place. This year will be the second year. Um, most of the spots on the committee are, are held by representatives from the various boards in the city, including yours. So tonight you're being asked to appoint one member to represent uh, this group on that, on that, on that committee. Um, I'm happy to answer questions about it. If that wasn't, yeah, I, I want to give you as much information as you want. Talking to me. 
Um, so they meet for like three months in, 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 uh, in, in the summertime, give or take. Um, and uh, they, they, they can grill the staff on questions and whatnot. The staff presents how all the expenses were. Usually it's the finance director and the public works director um, that present most of that information. Um, the, the, the committee can ask for additional uh, information or additional you know, details, whatnot. And then basically the, they, they will submit a, a uh, you know, kind of a finding as a committee of what they found uh, about the, how the city used, used the funds to the, to the city council. Um, in theory, if they didn't like the way things were used, they'd give recommendations about how what changes need to be made. Last year, um, they just you know overwhelmingly said yes. The, the, the city used the money exactly as they promised to use it, and uh, and and it was really you know, kind of a cool process just to see accountability in, you know in action. Um, it's I don't know I'm a nerd about these things, so I thought it was really interesting, and and um, but it's it's. It's, they sit in the same room here and they go through this stuff and, and uh, when the, you know, I guess three meetings and then it was done. Um, but so, yeah, that's what you're being asked to tonight to appoint uh, one of you to. And I suppose that you could, in theory, uh, uh, appoint one of the people who are not here. <laughs> you want to point your sister? That'd be really funny. Kind of <laughs> tempting. That would be hilarious. <laughs> you know, so just like any other board, they they uh, they, they or any other uh, body, they need to have a uh, a uh, quorum to to actually take action, um, and so it's important to have attendance at those. Um, uh, and so in theory, if someone was appointed to this board and then they later on found out the times meetings, they couldn't be there, then we reappoint somebody else probably to replace them. Um, but we're being asked to appoint someone tonight. If you're up for it, I would encourage you to do so. <laughs> I think, I think you, I think this would be the time for people to volunteer themselves versus oh, yeah. being other than your sister, uh, nominated by people that are here. I just have a quick question. Yeah. Um, last year what were like the big projects oh, so so we were talking about 10 million dollars spread out over a hundred different projects okay um uh streets were the big ones yeah, yeah pavement preservation streets you know takes up like several million dollars um, and a big chunk of it will go towards the mineral santa fe improvements um you know uh, uh they, they were building towards um and there's so sorry, I was. I should be more prepared to answer questions like that. Um, you can actually read their reports. So if you were to go to this the littletongov.org, I think that's our website. Um, littletonco.gov. Sorry, littletonco.gov. Littletoncolorado.gov. Um, there's you can pull up the boards and committees. You can actually see all of your names. So if you want to see your names on there, woohoo! Um, it says what your term ends. That kind of stuff. Um, but you can actually see what the capital improvement sales tax committee was. You go and read their minutes. Um, you can see what actions they took, those kind of things. Um, and in there will be the presentation materials, including what all the information that was presented to them. So sorry, I don't have more details than that. No, that's fine. I've, okay. I've looked at some of the stuff. I was just curious if there were standout projects that, well, I think, or that they'll be convening on again. And I mean, a big part of we reallocated funds towards bike and pet safety too. And yeah. So that'll be yeah. there's two million dollars for that. Although not, I'm not sure at all that came from uh, 3A. I did. Though most of it came yeah. from 3A. So we... uh, a, a, a big chunk of the money is used for grant match. So um, like the federal government will award grants that require a 5% or a 10% local match. So they'll pay 90% if we pay 10%. And so we'll use 10%, our, that 10% will come from that 3A funds to get us even more, it'll leverage and bring more dollars to the little which is really cool. Do you know what days and times these meetings are? I don't. Uh, so uh, again, I could, I could pull up and see where they met last year, and they might be the same. Um, I, I, at this point, if you're interested in it, you know, express your interest, and then if if, if it later becomes a conflict, then we'll, we'll you know have the opportunity to to update that. Um, yeah, I yeah, I could try to pull it up, see if I can tell you when they met last year. Does anyone have interest in that? In that? Oh, it's two times a year, not three times. And, and they met in April and May last year. So it might be quick. Uh, well, I don't think it's going to be the April. We're already in April. Yeah. Um, maybe. Um, yeah. I think Ricky just volunteered. Yeah, I'll volunteer for that. That's 
I'm good with it. Thank you, Ricky. You, you know, one thing that I love about those things is you get to meet more people. And so you're, you're building a network. And so th this, this board will be, a, you know, a, allowed to, encouraged to invite guest speakers and presenters, that kind of stuff. Um, and anytime you get a chance to meet the finance director or the police chief, or whatever, you're just building your network of people, you know, so that, you know, like Mackenzie said, Hey, I want to make this the next hotspot. Well, as you build your network, that's you, you, you gain more leverage in accomplishing whatever your goals are. So cool. Thanks Ricky. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, then we can move on to the next discussion topic of the pre-work for a town hall. Just kind of a little background of that was something that the last um, NGAV came up with was the idea of a town hall specifically targeted at young people because young people um, are folks who least often respond to surveys that the city puts out and provide their input um, into how they want to see their city managed and what they want to see improved or what they think is doing well. So we thought like directly reaching out to those people and having a place that they can come voice their opinions to us and then also kind of help set some of the directives and things that we want to focus on this year of people of our age demographic of the things of their concerns. Um, we had talked about maybe hosting it over at ACC if space was available. Um, we were, I was talking with Danielle about it, but I don't know who our next um, staff coordinator or I guess city coordinator is. Liaison? Yeah. yeah. Liaison? Liaison. Yeah. And so from now it's me. Think of me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and we had talked about a couple different dates that have been pushed out a couple times. And the last date that we were talking about is June. Um, but I think a priority is to make sure we do it right the, rather than like doing it super quickly. So if, if we need to move it to July or like find a better time to do it, I think that should be a priority for us. And the, one of the ideas that came with it is we want to make sort of like a template of how to do this so we can make this a semi-regular thing maybe once or twice a year so we can get the input of those people who are a lot of times not recorded in the surveys that the city puts out um, and make sure that there is space for young people to have their voice heard for what they want to see in the city that they live. By young people, are you talking high school, college, in or? Age group like 36 and under for like the engineer. Okay. That's when I say young people. Okay. Sorry, I'm. No, I'm just curious because I. Uh, yeah, I wasn't. I, I wasn't joking, but we've defined young people as everybody who was born after I graduated from college. But getting those age groups to come to the same thing requires very different things. Like there's certain young people who aren't showing up because they have babies or really young kids, which is totally different than why a high school kid isn't showing up. So that's why I asked the question, and if it makes sense to have something where it's all of those people coming together, or maybe we have different events or meetings at different places, maybe like for the high schoolers, it's at the high school. Yeah. And um, for, you know, going to like having daycare or childcare set up for young people who are coming and spending time when they might not have a sitter because it might yeah. be late at night. So maybe doing it a little bit differently because I do think young people, it's very, I mean, those age yeah, groups are really yeah. very different. I think the second piece to that, in addition to getting the, um, to getting feedback from younger people is recruitment. Um, that's been a big struggle with, with next gen, um, I would say. And actually clarify this for me, please. Um, do we have a maximum size group now that we're aboard? The city council reduced the, the size of this group from up to 15 members. Now the maximum size is seven. So you have seven members. Really? Okay. So you have a full group for the first time. Wow. Well, I still think being, you know, <laughs> it is important. Um, and it's frankly, it's been a challenge for us to figure out how to recruit because like you said, like it's such a we're all in very different seasons, depending on how young you are. Um, and it's hard to find the right people. I think a lot of people that are in a similar season as me just can't do this. I mean, I can barely do it, you know, with, with work and kids. It's like, it's just, I feel like it's all coming on. And so it's just nice to find more people. So then we're like, okay, you know, who's going to feel motivated to do this? How can we strategically bring people in that will want to do it and be excited and have the bandwidth for yeah. Um, so I think ACC really stuck out to us because, you know, it's typically people on the young, pro young professional tract, they at least go to school here. 
Um, and I like to explore more like at high schools too, like maybe offering for credit or an internship opportunity um, as an incentive. So, um, I, yeah, I like um, the idea that um, you mentioned for doing high schools as well as, um, I mean, both Littleton and Heritage have fairly large like theaters we could use, large audience or smaller lecture halls. Um, I think as far as like younger uh, parents with kids, like this might be like a lot of setup, but maybe having an option to like call in to a town hall as well, because uh, that can remove some of that barrier for if you have, you know, a baby or a toddler having to attend the meeting and find childcare. Um, and then I think another important thing for getting people to show up is um, both like a physical and an online presence. And I think um, with you know, online presence is important, but people aren't going to see that unless they already are looking up things about city government. But being um, in person with, uh, you know, advertisements that this is happening at uh, Heritage in Littleton and at ACC and at, um, you know, local businesses or, you know, coffee shops where young people are, I think, could really help to bring people out to these. Yeah, some of the strategies we talked about for that is like the city social media and also the Littleton report. Just there's a timeline that they like we have to submit that information before they can publish it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also think like we had talked about maybe mm -hmm. seeing if some businesses in downtown Littleton will let us put on their like post boards, uh, like flyers for the events. Um, this might be taking a completely different direction oh, than what you were thinking, but I also think part of the problem or difficulty that people are having with coming to a political event is it's very politically charged times and people aren't wanting to put their voice forward so my recommendation would to be be to work with businesses in downtown Littleton and maybe as a realtor I get the most business when there's drinks <laughs> or a prize or something fun and people aren't coming because I'm saying I want to be a realtor they're coming because it's a fun thing for them to do so having a fun thing for them to do and then maybe having stations where Ballet Physique is offering a week of classes to anyone who fills out a survey. And um, I, don't, I don't know, like have the businesses offer items that get people to fill out surveys because I think people are a lot more open to speaking privately. They're a lot more open to writing their thoughts than they are to speaking their thoughts. And if it's a fun event and also gets people to see local businesses. It has multiple benefits. But I think it's a very select few people who are gonna make time to come do something that makes them uncomfortable. And that's what I'm seeing in our generation is it is uncomfortable right now. Yeah, yeah like genuine feedback comes from con intentional conversation, not necessarily always in this setting. Yes. Exactly. And I think that's another piece and, and perhaps I would say is probably part of the decision why we kind of switched this to a board as I think there was always this tension with like this group specifically and all of the rules and regulations and it felt very rigid. And I think what we came to find is a lot of us were longing for community with each other as well. And that is a big piece of what we want. And I think in a lot of ways it almost addresses, you know, I, it sounds like, well, the first thing that came out of council's mouth was strategies for young professionals to move here. And it's like, I mean, to see other young people here and, and to have community and have space for that. So yeah. I think, and I guess I'm kind of thinking out loud, I'm trying to navigate the tensions that we've felt and like, how can we really move forward and, and continue to expand our network and grow? I love it. If you don't mind, you know, just because not all of us were here when, we, when this idea came up, a little history and also a little bit of some of the resources that might be available um, as you plan this or any other you know, activities. So um, uh, the former council liaison um, uh, suggested that, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm misremembering, Andrew, but he suggested this is a possible outreach activity. Um, the idea was was that members of this body would be the, uh, the kind of the, the the forum, and they would share their experiences and what they you know what they were doing on the board, those kind of things, and then then take questions and comments and suggestions and those kind of things back and forth. So it was a, a town hall largely focused on on the next generation advisory body and and what 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 you're what you're doing, what you could do in the future, those kind of things. And one of the goals 
quite possibly was to generate interest in serving as a member of this. Um, so, you know, take that into account um, as you kind of, you know, understanding what, why, why we're talking about this particular activity. Then from a resources point of view, um, the city does have a website. We have our own TV station. We have, you know, a newspaper we mail out regularly, those kind of things. And so we will do what we can as a city to support your goals and what you're working towards, um, including, you know, trying to get the word out on things or share your story or whatnot, or profile and highlight what you do, you know, recording wise. Um, if we want to produce, a, you know, a, a virtual meeting that has certain interactions, you know, using a facility that we already have all that set up, like our council chambers might make sense. Yeah. Um, we do have a budget that could be used for food and those kind of things. So um, we're not gonna buy alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I, I'm just saying, you know, you have a number. Good. Yeah. No, but you're, you're not wrong about that being a draw for sure. I, I, people I, I, talking. Almost every <laughs> Um, but, but, we, but we could, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, provide some refreshments that if that was something that was important to you, at, at whatever you're doing. But you, as a group, can decide to keep, keep continue on this path. You could decide to change it to whatever you want to. You can decide. I'm not. I, we don't have any interest in this. We don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, so, so all options are on the board as you discuss the pre-work for a town hall. Andrew suggested maybe, you know. Delaying the date a little bit. Well, not really. All options are on the table, and and you you know it's up to you guys to decide how how you want to move forward as a as a as a uh, board. Um, I I would suggest that um, once we email out those things from last year, the council gave you direction on that you consider how you can work that into the, whatever you're doing. Uh, but but uh, anyway, so that's that's a little bit of background. And again, correct me if you remember any differently. That's correct recollection. One, sorry, one more quick thought. Um, We've had, my sister and I have actually talked to the owner of Ballet Physique about doing event, an event, and it probably be better done through the city. But um, have, who's heard of Yoga on the Rocks at Red Rocks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of, it gets a ton of people to come to it, most of the younger generation, doing, maybe you shut down this again, my, or go to a park, or if you could shut down Main Street, it'd be a great photo op moment, have a big ballet physique class. They, I know, are very open to doing that. And on the invites, you send out a survey with the invite, and then you also have stations where people can win prizes to local businesses if they fill out more information. And I think that accomplishes a lot of things. And as people sign, like maybe it's, you could have them buy tickets to the event or whatever, and you might get people from outside of Littleton who are looking to move to Littleton and they could answer some questions on why they aren't. And it would just generate, I, I think it would generate a ton of interest and I think you'd get a lot of feedback and there wouldn't be alcohol. <laughs> you have alcohol. You just can't buy it. Can't buy it. Yeah. That's the big difference between school events and city events. There's never booze at school events, and almost all of the things that I get invited to in the city council have booze. So it's just who pays for it. Not city hosted events. Yeah. <laughs> a question, I guess, Mike, more from like a legal liability perspective. Are we allowed to partner with local businesses in downtown? Oh, yeah. Okay. Just yeah. making sure. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, you know, some of the, uh, you know, recommend attributes and strategies for the ongoing vitality of Littleton. I think that would really, you know, partnering with a local business or, or drawing customers to local businesses. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that is the vitality of a community. You know? well, I mean, the one thing I do here is kind of maybe multiple smaller events as opposed to one big yes. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was a school board member, we would do meetings at the, at the high schools and we would buy pizza and that's how we would get people to come. And that would be could be a strategy for the high schools, and then we could do it, you know, yoga for one place, or and then, um, and then a parent event maybe where there's a daycare. You, know, you can do multiple little things versus one big thing. You get a lot of young moms going to <laughs> twist my arm. I'll yeah, a bar class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I work my yoga. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Is there the possibility to shut down Main Street? Yeah. So at this point, I would not put any limits on any ideas. You you guys flesh out what you want, and if you want a specific idea, you can say, "Hey, Mike, can we do this?" So the answer to this question is yes. There's a possibility we can shut down Main Street. But but at this point, you you guys come up with whatever you want and flush it out. Because by the time you get to it, you might be have nothing to do with Main Street, right? Um, so don't don't let that stop your 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 thought process from going. Um, but yes, generally when it comes to public right of way public home park, those kind of things, we're gonna have access to almost all of it. And even if we can't do Main Street, because I know that's a big corridor, so that might be like logistically difficult to shut down. We could also try to do like a neighboring park, like Bega Park or a different park in Middleton, or maybe like a neighboring street, like um, I think it's Prince between like Ryan Key Bros and uh, the, like where inside the scoop is. Ranking right. loves events. He would let he yeah, does. the parking lot. <laughs> Bega Park is, hard, uh, is really underutilized, so. Mm -hmm. So here's one other thing we could consider to get awareness out there is that trying to be a board that's more involved in the community to get folks our age out. What if we offered to help host and attend like ribbon cutting ceremonies for you know new establishments that are opening and then we can spread a word through there too. I think that's an opportunity because we have younger folks who are, hey, check this place out. It's an awesome coffee you know, shop or whatever it might be. And then we can kind of, you know, um, advocate and share about you know future things that are upcoming that we're going to be part of. And so now we start to get a little bit of a following going. Well, that I mean the one thing one of my council colleagues on the council was complaining about how many ribbon cuttings we're getting invited to by the downtown chamber. Yeah. And so getting you guys on the list for the downtown chamber would at least help with that kind of get them out of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I I only go to the ones with boots. Now, so. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, this is our recorded question. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I still haven't cursed, so I feel like I'm ahead. <laughs> this week, I'm hearing a lot of different ideas. Um, are there things that we want to like sort of target? Because I really like the idea of doing multiple smaller events. Like, do we want to break it down by like geographically where people live or like mm -hmm. different sub age groups within this entire age group of how do we want to kind of target and start to like figure out more tangible items of like we want to do, let's say two events or three events or however, what are, what are y'all thinking on that? I think both and in terms of age group and location, yeah. I think it would be great to have some options. Um, I think we've targeted at least Oh, probably four different age groups, right? We've got high school, we've got college, we've got young professional pre-kids, and then we've got young families. I think that probably generally covers the, the demographics. Um, also, I guess there could be some people live in Littleton, own or work, own a business or work in Littleton, and then go to school in Littleton, right? Are those the three prerequisites to be involved? Yes. So that's, a, I guess, another sub-demographic to consider. I, that just made me think about the shift workspaces, too. You know, could we plug in that way? Um, so um, in Rivierco recently did an event. They sold tickets. They did, like, a tasting menu. And Denver does restaurant week type things. And Boulder does, too. And they're well, super Littleton does, too. Littleton does, too. Yeah, I mean, I know they're... Um, a part of it, but do we, yeah. What did they do? Was that one of the things they shut down the street for? No, um, the, and that was the Littleton Business Chamber was the one that did that, and they didn't shut down the street. Okay. So they, they, we do shut down Main Street at least four or five times a year for different events, but that wasn't one of them, yeah. Yeah, doing like a tasting or a food event where you have all the restaurants and bars have basically stands in front of their establishment where people can buy a ticket and walk around because I do think it's also important to advertise to people outside of Littleton because that's the goal right to bring new people young people into Littleton and having events like that is really attractive I mean Denver Beer Co's event sold out incredibly fast I tried to buy tickets I couldn't <laughs> um, and Littleton Brewing Company will open up on Littleton Boulevard yeah. yes yeah. that's what I was thinking with the bourbon cutting so that'd be a good one <laughs> I also like the idea of like if we're like doing surveys, like you said, of having we can ask different questions to residents versus non-residents of like, what, like what do you like about Littleton living here, and what do you want to improve about it? Then also ask non-residents like why, 
why were you not in Littleton? Like basically trying to get yeah. both sides of the coin on perspectives like that. And you could have like bins where people put a ball or something. We have signs on it. Like what would you most like to see in Denver? New restaurants, safe, like safety, um, better streets, oh, a more walkable community. And then as people walk by, they can just drop a ball and it's a visual thing. We get to see it. A sticky note system kind of like that could work as well. Mm -hmm. Just like a board with sticky notes on it. I think one other thing we might want to consider for non-residents is not only like encouraging people to um, uh, move to or work in Littleton, but also encouraging people to shop in Littleton as well and using like community spaces because Littleton has places like downtown Littleton or, you know, growing like um, some of our other shopping centers or Aspen Grove or the new Littleton Village area as places where people from, uh, you know, Inglewood and Centennial and South Denver and Highlands Ranch might want to come into Littleton to have a place of shopping and also of community for young people. Is there any chance of moving the farmer's market to State Street? Oh, amen. Yeah. I mean, the, from, from Aspen Grove. Yeah. There, there is an effort this year to have farmer's market on Main Street, but the Aspen Grove one will continue as well. So that it won't okay. be in place of, it'll be in addition to. Even better. They're working on the permits right now. Curious, has anyone in here, um, does anyone know of or has communicated with, um, there's been like a couple of uh, citizen groups that have popped up on social media, um, one being Vibrant Littleton, I think the other one's Littleton Social Cycle that I'm thinking of. I wonder if anyone's ever interacted with them. I've talked with some of the Vibrant folks at city council meetings, okay. um, but that's really been the extent of so far my experience with them. Yeah, the, the, the vibrant littles and people have lobbied me as a, you know, that, I mean, that's, I think that's what they're supposed to do, uh, yeah. that they're activists and, and they, they've really pushed on the, um, uh, the, both the, um, bike, bike and walkable community part, but also, um, they've, uh, been more, um, Development friendly than some of the other voices in the multifamily city. housing. Some of the other voices yeah. in the city. Affordable housing. So we could. I mean, yeah, they're they're they're. Around. They come to mind for me because they're on social media. They're really active on social media, and I've seen. Um, I think they've done a really good job of getting their name out in our community. So I, I'd like to pick their brain on some strategies on how how can we continue to do that. They're Is two, there an opportunity to work together? Perhaps? They're, they're two different groups with different missions, but they're very intertwined. Same same people. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know any of these people. I don't want to know them. So yeah. I don't know if anyone's ever met them. I'm like thinking about messaging them on Instagram. You're like, do you want to come to one of our meetings? So to, to that to that point, um, you know, uh, and, and not getting ahead of Ch Chair Andrew over here, but the next item you're talking about is opportunities to collaborate with other boards and committees. Um, but the reality is, is there's no reason why you couldn't collaborate with outside entities as well. So, you know, um, like Mackenzie mentioned, you know, Greg Ranke, who owns Ranke Brothers, um, you know, if we wanted to talk to Hoodlum, Historic Downtown Littleton Merchants Association, um, great, greatest acronym ever. Uh, but if you wanted to talk to that group or, or the Littleton Business Chamber or Littleton, Littleton Downtown District Association or a specific business or a specific, you know, group like Social Cycles, they, they're, they're just starting. I think this Sunday will be their first Sunday ride of the season. Um, and, and then they'll do like um, some weekday rides later on in the, in the summertime. Um, but, but if you want to have them come and do five minutes, tell you what they do. We, the staff liaison will coordinate it. So as you build your future agenda items, whatever you want to put on there, we'll try our best to accommodate and, and get you those discussions, those opportunities to to uh, to utilize that. Um, I think the next thing we should start focusing on are like what are what are tangible action items that we can take from like our discussion here to work on. Of like, is that do we want to engage Hoodlum or LDDA or um, start to figure out? Where we, when and where we might want to do some of these events um, to at least get the ball rolling. I, I would like to work with Hoodlum and um, yeah, the business owners on Main Street. There's been, I mean, Sakoon just closed, Nook just closed, Tavern. There's a lot of 
turnover right now. And um, we're seeing, I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this. Very similar businesses have been going in to rotation in Littleton is what I would say. We have multiple burger joints. We have multiple taco joints. Uh, we don't have a great young hip date night spot. We're, we're missing a few key elements. And I think it'd be really awesome if this board could go out and find restaurants and kind of act as a recruitment team that, and we bring those restaurants to talk to Ludlum or Cal. Yeah. A lot. yeah. So he's, he's on the Littleton Business Chamber. Yep, the Littleton Business Chamber. Uh, he's also a significant property owner on Long Main Street. Yeah. <laughs> having the Business Chamber feels like a really easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost all those groups would be excited to be invited. Yeah. yeah. Talk. So instead of just having him have his you know, for lease sign up, there's restaurants that I know multiple people have said this would do really great in Littleton, or I would love this if it was in Littleton. And I know we probably all have our own list. And I think it'd be cool if we could go to those companies and those restaurants and say, hey, we think we have an opportunity, but it'd be helpful to know what Cal is looking for to fill that space and what those requirements might be. That's my thought. Yeah, I like that. I like the idea of maybe we could also start talking with some of them about, because um, I feel like that'd probably be the most effective way if we want to engage with businesses in downtown Littleton to go through these organizations, because going, I think, door to door through every, for every business would, one, be very time exhaustive, um, and then I think it also might not be the most fruitful of if we're coming from organizations these businesses are already a part of, kind of gives us a little bit more validation of, like, as the NGAB rather than just like random people showing up, talking to the owner, like, hey, do you want to take part in this event? I know there's a lot of people I, I, uh, that are business owners uh, on Main Street who really want to be a part of events like that, though. So I, I, I've talked to a few of them, and I, I wouldn't downplay our role at all in getting those things to happen because I think – it's, it helps their business at the end of the day. And if we're able to make those connections and facilitate an awesome event, that's a, a promotion for them. Yeah. They're gonna wanna do it. I guess a better clarifying question, because you might know this more than me. Are a lot of the downtown Littleton business owners in these organizations, or is it kind of like a mix? Because I'm not too familiar with them. Yeah, the Littleton Business Chamber does have good representation. If, if, they're, if they're not members of that, they're, they're friends with somebody who is a member of it. Um, Hoodlum is maybe a little bit more limited than the Littleton Business Chamber, or a lot more limited, you know, but um, but yeah, they all they, they know each other. It's a really networked, highly networked group of people. It seems like that's a really good opportunity to kind of blend both of these ideas of inviting these organizations to come and kind of do their their pitch right so they get to see all of us at once and we get to kind of identify yeah this really vibes with what we're looking for and from there kind of go to that individual level of partnership of well hey this is what our group is working on and i want to represent and talk through this you know what, what do you want to do with it i think that's a really good tangible first step in getting that moving forward because instead of you know trying to figure out well you go here you go here let's bring them to us and then go up to them. I think that'd be the right way to kind of approach this. Yeah, I like that. Could we work on maybe trying to get some of these organizations that are in sure. this month's meeting? And one suggestion also would be, it'd be a good chance to meet some of the other city departments. We might, if you were interested, we could have someone from economic development come along with, with that would be helpful. We have good relationships with those groups as well. And so we could hear from, from you can, and, and then you can, Throw your favorite restaurants at the economic development group <laughs> after them. <laughs> yeah. Stone down here, baby. <laughs> Number 38, we gave them half a million dollars. No, up, to, up to up to half a million dollars to come here. So the economic development. And give is a funny word because it kind of yeah. they gave they they keep, refund. <laughs> they refund. keep the part of their sales tax up yeah. to that much over the five-year period. Yeah. So when, 
When does construction start on um, for the Little Tim Ballet? The it's already. It's going to open this summer. Gonna, You're talking about the one. It's going to open this. Yeah. Little Tim yeah. Company. No, it's, no, no, no. What, it, there used to be a ballet shop, Brett. It's oh, Penny Robin. Robin. Is that what you're talking about? On Main Street? On Main Street. Yeah, Penny Robin. Penny Robin. Oh, Thank you. I don't know. Yeah, I have, I've heard that whole um, strip is not developing quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long, it's been on hold, it seems like. For a long are they time. scraping it? What are they doing? No, 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 no. They can't scrape it. They can't, yeah, historically. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's moving forward, but I don't know about it. Okay. Um, you know, we could it, it, with probably a different different night. Whatever you might invite the you know like a historical preservation plan, planner to come talk about. But you know what's they they would know more about some of the opportunities and and limits of what we can do in those historic buildings. Yeah. Okay. Can I put a pitch in? Yeah. yeah. So before you're gone, if the if on there the plan for downtown project downtown is going to be uh, discussed at a meeting on April 8th, which is virtual, and a meeting, meeting on April 10th at Bemis. And at the library. At the, at the library. And so, and then the city council is going to discuss project downtown at our April, uh, our April 23rd meeting. So before you guys meet again. But I would really appreciate it if you guys sign up for one or attend one of those meetings and 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 then I'm, before we're done, I'm going to give you my card. You can um, email me or call me to talk about your impressions of those things. And in the long run, you know. So what I've discovered is the way cities, the way this city is trying to work, is you make a plan, and then that plan becomes a multi-year investment strategy. It's how the city decides where it's going to put its money. And so. Um, what I'm working with the city manager to do is when when plans are coming forward, they come to this group as part of that process. So you guys get to have input. This is one of those things where I'm late to the game and figuring out that we need to get it in front of you before. So I'm asking you to attend these events. And then you guys you guys could call a meeting between now and the 23rd and, and, and um, do feedback and that's up to you. But I will give you my card so you can call me and individually contact me does not count as a meeting. And one thing to note, uh, based off what Robert said, is generally planning a, a out of sync meeting takes about, we have to like plan it two weeks in advance so that the clerk can put it on the calendar. We can get a reserved space. So it's fortunately not super quick. Um, so if, if we want to do that, we have to keep that in mind that it takes about two weeks to officially get out of sync meetings planned. Assuming you want to talk about city business, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the exceptions, so like if you just wanted to support an event that was happening somewhere, and you wanted us to post on there that the NGAB was going to be at this event, we'd post that. You just wouldn't be able to. Well, you weren't supposed to be talking about city business, but you're there to have fun and introduce yourself, who you are, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Do, do we do we think it would be appropriate to talk to all three of the the, the groups that we talked about are two or three, or does anyone have any specific preferences of whether Hudlum, Wilton Business Chamber, LDDA, or the Economic Development? Because that's a lot of people. I think Littleton Business Chamber uh, and Economic Development and Vibrant Littleton was a good mix, and that would that would give you a lot to discuss in one night, uh, those three groups. Assuming that they all uh, accept an invitation, which I think they will. Yeah. Is Cal, which, what is what? He's with the Littleton Business Chamber. I'm just going to work back real quick to what you said. I would love to attend the um, downtown development uh, meeting on the 10th. Project downtown. Project downtown, thank you. Um, and then I think as far as in addition to like uh, venue and engagement, we should also in the future be thinking about like what format do we want this to be in? And we've already discussed that a little bit of um, maybe it's more of like a thing where people don't have to do all of their questions in the super formal like get up and speak style but have you know options for cards or for sticky notes or um you know more social kind of atmosphere um and then since it's not just one of us it's all of us doing a town hall like do we want a moderator from the city maybe um so seeing if there would be somebody who would be willing to do that i like that 
Uh, like I know there's definitely people who are previously um, on the NGAB that were interested in that because our original thought was like basically going to be a panel of us and then one person moderates. But I like the idea of like kind of a more, like you said a more social atmosphere. But then if we want to do like a mini panel, we could have either someone from the city or someone who's previously been a part of the NGAB moderate because they might know what are good questions to navigate and like to direct towards us so that people in the community know what our role is. I also think a good setup for having a moderator is um, doing a charity, like a gala event. And uh, so again, you're asking local businesses to donate to things that people are bidding on and maybe we choose a charity that benefits Littleton in some form and uh, then you would have a moderator get up and speak and not only talk to about the charity but the Littleton community and we're getting funding for something that's helping the community we're getting local businesses attention and it's a fun event that people want to come to and spend money on and I think that'd be really fun to do. Yeah, I like that. Do we want to start? You know, a lot of different ideas have been like talked about. Whether it's that or doing something um, on, on Main Street with all the local businesses, or like you said, doing like yoga or bar, or going to a, a particularly to a high school with some like pizza or something. Do we want to start like kind of figuring out like? when we might want to do these things so we can like set rough rough estimates or kind of um, rough timelines i guess is a better way of phrasing it i mean in order to begin you must begin so i think we just have to start somewhere um and know that you know we might learn from it it might not be perfect it might not pertain to everyone but we can always do more so I think it'd be good to have like one specific goal, like leave this meeting with like, okay, we want to do this event. We have our action items. We know who we need to contact. We know our next steps. I, I'm happy to talk to Ellen. She's the owner of Valley Physique. She's, I've talked to her before about doing a event where people bring mats. And she, I think she already has a lot of the setup to be able to do an outdoor event since they had to do some of that stuff for, during COVID. So I'm happy to talk to her about what that could look like. Um, but we'd also need to figure out the venue and how many people it could be. We want, we want to be an outdoor summer event. Yes. No, that makes sense. Of out, Yeah, outdoor in the summer. Um, do we want to look at like different parks in the city? Because um, like Kettering Parks and has a nice green space. Or do we want to stick closer to downtown with Baker Park? Um, I guess that'd be better be questions for, for Ellen, you said, of like, what's the best suited, like, uh, not atmosphere, but like terrain? I think she could do it anywhere. I, I do think if we could do Main Street, talk about like a social media moment. You see the pictures of people doing yoga on the rocks. You have a bunch of people in Downward Dog looking down Littleton Main Street. That would be... I think that would be, it'd make it big, I guess, instead of saying, let's go meet in the park. It would make it a true Littleton event. Uh, and I think you could advertise the heck out of it and get a lot more people to come to it. So, yeah, and if you did it on like a Saturday morning, you know, even if, you know, I don't know, the husbands don't want to do the bar, they could bring the kids or the dogs and be around downtown pouring into local, other local businesses. Yeah, so it's, it's, Certainly, probably a big perk for a lot of the local, one of the main street businesses. And you'd want to do it early. Yeah. I mean, you certainly would have less complaints about closing the street down. That's and, true. Because <laughs> especially Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, is the, the restaurants are packed. So. I, I I mean, I just yoga on the rock starts at That's seven a.m. It's early. People get there early, and you have to buy tickets early. Yeah. <laughs> So I wonder if that's kind of the approach, if it would be ideal to do it after, um, what is it, the, is it the last Friday's event? So you do something, you know, where businesses are open later on Fridays, and then the next day you have this event on Main Street. So people who are like, well, what should we do tomorrow morning? Well, now we have something. 
and go check out and it kind of gets a little more uh, word of mouth without having to do too much. I think we should tell all the restaurants to have a brunch special. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the question for you, Mike, is what, what would, I know it'd be a lot of work to get Main Street shut down for this event. What would we talk to for that? So I'll, I'll be happy to coordinate, you know, if you guys pick a date and see what's available and see, see what, it would, you know, the logistics of it. So, we, you know, we, we, we'd figure out, you know, what, you know, the, the main, the main thing would be really dialing in what your goal for the event is. Like, what well, this is our purpose. This is our why. This is how it meets what the council's, you know, you know, kind of charges to do this, whatever. And then, you know, to your point, you just got to start. So if it doesn't quite hit the mark, okay, but you knew why you were doing it. You knew what, you know, what was going on. You got the picture or whatever, whatever it is that you're going for. Um, but from a logistics point of view, permits and, and uh, you know, barricades, those kind of things, uh, the, the city would would do our best to support you. You know, um, you well, know. I assume you need six to eight weeks. To oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's it's, it's it's not an overnight summer. Yeah. Um, yeah. What what what's the implication for the setup, like on Main Street versus in a park? Is it kind of a similar process because there's still permits that need to be pulled, or would it it's be way easier not in a roadway? Yeah. Um, so but, that's sort of much more yeah. significant. Uh, but 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 so McKenzie's point, you know, um, it, it's a it's a it's a completely different draw. It's a completely different draw. Um, but but we we do have events on Main Street, so we know how to do it and go through and we do you know that follow the process. Um, but yeah, if you're not if you're not you know messing with traffic, it's a whole different lane you go down. As is pun intended. <laughs> I'm really good at bad dad jokes. I hope this isn't a huge, I don't know, derailment, or it might maybe for a different meeting. And I'm not volunteering myself because I'm not the right person to do this. But if, as we're on this conversation of engaging more people, particularly young people, you know, social media is how you do that. That's how I know about Vibrant Littleton. That seems like the most, like, it's gotten a lot of traction in a short amount of time. And so I guess, like, what would the rules be around next gen having and social media presence uh so um we can do some things with it for sure um the, so the, just from open means point of view you know if, if if you guys are all chatting on that social media mm -hmm. that's a problem <laughs> for us because because you know especially if you're chatting about an event or you're planning those kind of things um but but uh but as far as like you know sharing sharing you know you know, event information, that kind of stuff, we, we'll, we can do whatever we want, whatever we can to help you accomplish your goals in that regard. Um, you know, one thing that it comes to mind you know, is we, it's much easier to play off of other events, like to build off of other things. So like we, we haven't, I don't think we've announced the Summer Jam series yet, um, but for those of you who live close to Stern Park, we host concerts there. Um, we, we put a professional stage in place and, and uh, and it's a big deal. It's, you know, food trucks and whatnot, you know. Um, and so, you know, if, if, you know, like if you wanted to do your yoga three hours before an event or something like that, um, or the morning after an event, you know, we, the stage is not going to be disappeared that night, you know. And so you have a nice platform for the instructor to instruct from. It's a beautiful setting, you know. Um, and, and we already have all the logistics in place, including the porta potties and the other things, you know, uh, to support, support that kind of thing. Um, and again, I'm not so maybe less focus on the logistics and more focus on what your goal is, and then we can fill in with the, all the logistics to support whatever you whatever you want to do. Um, but yes, tying down a date and the further in advance, the better for us, you know, um, you know, because it is it, it does require some level of resources, whatever it is, including the the marketing part of it. Um, but you know, going going back to the town hall idea, it sounds like we're we're, 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 you know, at least some of, some of you are still talking about it. Some of you are, have moved on to evolve from it. I think that it'd be, it'd be nice to see if you guys can, do have any kind of consensus of, of whether that's something you want to focus on or if that's an addition to this other things you're kind of, you know, going towards, um, just so that we can agendize properly whatever the next discussion is. Um, and you don't have to decide. We can agendize it the exact same way and you can see this discussion, but 
Um, I'm assuming that you don't want to be here, you know, until the middle of the night. <laughs> um, most of your meetings probably don't go as long as we've already gone tonight. 8.30 is a, two hours is a pretty long meeting for this group. Doesn't mean you guys couldn't have those. It's just, you, you'll, you'll decide. But, um, uh, so if, if we don't, if we're not quite ready to have consensus and we want to include the two members that aren't here tonight, we can kind of, I can create an agenda item that allows for this conversation to continue in, in May. Um, as uh, if, if, if you want me to invite people to the main meeting, yes. um, that then, then, you know, that's going to you know, reduce the amount of time available for this kind of discussion. Um, I don't know. So you guys tell me what you want to do. I'm happy to try to facilitate it. <laughs> so one thing I think we could do is like, think about, um, so I think we've have like basically three different demographics that we're trying to get to come to these events. And it's, um, the youngest is like high school and college age, um students and then group two is like recently graduated pre-kids entering young professionals and then third is young parents if we maybe want to create um you know start with one of those and do that event first and then we can use what we've learned from that to build an event for the other two um i think it probably should be either the young professionals or young parents since you know it's going to be harder to reach a lot of students with it being summer and they're, you know, if they're all in school, it's very easy to reach a lot of students and mass. Um, but that could be an idea of like separating those into different points of an agenda. I like that of like targeting one specific group and then learning, learning from that. Um, does anyone have a preference or like one particular group that they want to start with or that to them is a good starting point? I think what you said about, um, Summer is probably a good call. So probably the young professionals or parents. You know, there's a lot of overlap there. Yeah. I also just think choose the event that's going to appeal to the most people. Yeah. You know, I in the summer, moms will bring their daughters to different events. You know, the yeah. college kids will naturally come where there's something fun to do. So I agree. What are y'all's thoughts on the idea? Because I, I kind of like uh, what Mike said of, at least for maybe the first one, kind of not riding on the coattails, but like using a pre-existing event with infrastructure to at least start and get the ball rolling. And then from there we can build. Because um, I think like shutting down Main Street and doing a lot of the stuff is feasible, but it's going to take a lot longer lead time to actually get it accomplished. Or if we could do like something before, like you said, summer jam or something, it might be easier to, Get everything all together. So we have the criterium coming up. That that weekend is so jam packed. I would say not not fill with all that one because it's already so full. You, you're exhausted if you do everything there. Um, Town Hall Art Center does a fundraiser for this themselves every year, every summer, and they close down a portion of Main Street for that. And so hosting an event like immediately following that when the, the, all the barricades are already in place, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're probably not pulling the same crowd, probably two different crowds, <laughs> um, but maybe that could be interesting. But yeah, the little jams, we have the, the meet, greet, and eats that the city does in the different parks, like four different parks around the city. Um, those are like afternoons. Uh, usually I think, I think they're Thursday afternoons, Friday afternoons. Um, I don't remember who's, but if we did it with the art event, would we be able to keep a weekend date early in the morning? <laughs> Yeah, so the, the the town hall arts event is a I believe it's a is it Friday night or Saturday night? I don't know. I'll, I'll Google. Okay, um, so you we would not keep the road closed overnight, and so so um, but we could it potentially close it earlier in the day than we would need to otherwise. So then we could do the yoga event and have it already closed for the their, their build of their stage and their stuff for the afternoon and evening. And I, I, I want to say that was a Saturday night um, uh, that they do that on, but that's pretty cool. And Town Hall Arts Center. Is, is it the Town Hall or is it the, um, it, the Art Depot? It was Town Hall Arts Center. Okay. Yeah, Town Hall Arts Center, uh, uh, Main Street fundraiser or something like that, maybe. Um, but uh, that's a, a, you know, you were talking about maybe having a, a, a um, charity of choice. That's a very worthy charity with deep Littleton ties, and it's so convenient to so many fun locations. So, um, yeah, that, that so doing it the morning of maybe you know a, a, a nice build in. Yeah, I like that idea. Good. 
They like, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was say they don't close the whole Main Street for that, but you maybe don't need the whole Main Street for that. You know, it's just the block. I don't think we would need all of Main Street. I don't expect that big of a turnout. Well, you can fit a lot of people and a lot of mats in, in a tiny space. Yeah, I don't know. Don't underestimate your these far fans. I'm <laughs> saying, I, I think there are a lot of people. A good turnout. Especially if we reach out to like different people on social media, have them advertise it. Um, I have a newsletter that I send out to 900 people once a month and advertise it there. I, I think... You, you could get a lot of people. I really, I think it would get a lot of attention. If you guys dial in your your kind of you know business plan for it, you know the the, the what, when, why, and all that kind of stuff, um, it's easier for me to help bring it around to different groups and figure out if there's you know how we can best support it. You know, okay. our our marketing team that does the criterium and does these other events, they're amazing. Yeah. And uh, and they might look at an idea like what you're saying, say, yep, we're all in, you know, and bring the drones for photography and, you know, all that kind of stuff, too. You know? To Mike's point, do we want to kind of like step back and focus on the 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 what and the why? Like we can figure out, like you said, the logistics, but figure out what specifically we're trying to accomplish and like why or like what are our driving goals and that what we're trying to do. Yeah, and what I was going to say earlier, Mike, is I, I, I don't think this question ever got answered for you. I, it sounds like, to me, we're moving away from Town Hall a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Something that feels maybe a little more organic, rather than we're going to have this, like, very, like, sterile, like, meeting. And so, um, I feel like for me, the goal that I'm getting in my mind is outreach and awareness. Like, I, I think I just want people to know we exist and, hey, this is, like, kind of a cool thing. Like, there's all these young people in Littleton's, like, I want to learn more and I want to be involved. And, I mean, my goal, I think my overall goal is that this committee or this board, sorry, would be so popular and so competitive to get in that it would be, like, really hard to get in. <laughs> so many people are interested. So... I do agree with that, Lauren. I think that's kind of what my thought is, is that really it's getting the awareness out through something that gets people out, right? So that's what we want is them to come in and understand, hey, this there's people who do what I do and they have the same things that I'm interested in. That was something that I experienced when I went to, you know, the new Denver Deer Co. is that you know, I could pack into 31 breweries that I but it was everyone around my age with their kids. It was a mom or dad chasing their kid while their spouse was at the table. That's what it brought. And so that was like the idea of the community that I think we're trying to aim here for is like, come do what people our age range like to do and get to know people in your community. And it's sponsored by us, which by the way, guess what? We're awesome. Get to know more about us. Um, you know, we're going to be at events and this is what we represent. So if you see us on the street, talk to us, get to know us a little. I think that's really what the like goal here is, is to get the awareness and doing something that we're all into. I think that's what we're doing. Do you guys still want to keep a component where we have a survey and we try and gather info? Okay. Yeah, I totally do. I think you can't change what you don't measure. So mm -hmm. we have some sort of survey, whether that's, you know, take a paper and drop it off here, or if it's a QR code that takes you to a survey you do on your phone, right? We're all phone driven. It's easy for us to do in the moment. It takes two minutes. Here's our feedback. I also think we want to have an invite so that we can get a head count of how many people are coming. And I think on that invite, when people RSVP, there could be an option to take a survey. We have to provide an email. We have their contact information. That's the Valley true. Physique has yeah. their contact information. Um, mm -hmm. That feels like a fair trade to come to a free bar class. I would ask, as a city government body, are we allowed, to, if we like collect emails, then like unsolicited email information about future events? Like, is that something we would be allowed to do? I'm sure we could also like have a checkbox of, do you want to be included? Okay, in the yeah. yeah. Yeah, our, 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 our team could do opt-in stuff so that, you know, yeah. including text messaging or whatever else. It could be like, I mean, when you buy a ticket for anything, it's like, are you 21 plus? Or do you live in Littleton? Yeah. Yes or no? Would you like to? <laughs> I think. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, 
in addition to like making people aware that we're a board and a part of the city government that exists to represent young people, we should also, as you mentioned, uh, be like soliciting uh, the opinions of people, young people in Littleton for what the board should do um, moving forward. Because I think that's part of why we want that public engagement is to figure out what the public wants us to do. And then also, um, and this could be a separate matter of the same thing, but also, you know, make it seem why Littleton is a good place to stay or people maybe from neighboring suburbs or from Denver to come to, or maybe if you're looking in, at coming to Colorado, why Littleton is the right place to end up. Yeah, I like that, that testimonial. Yeah. I mean, I think people are gonna be more willing to and more eager to be plugged in if, if it's a place that feels worth being plugged into. Or at least it has things happen. Make it all multiple choice. Yeah, I agree. All right. So, um, well, for the next meeting, then, and I'll work with 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 the chair on setting up the agenda. But I think we have a good plan for it. And you want me to talk to uh, Ellen? Yeah, I think that'd be helpful to start dialogue with, um, especially because I know that's something that seems to have like a lot of interest and traction within this group. Along those lines, do you think bar is the best option? Because there's also, I mean, we could reach out to a yoga person. I don't know, just double check, I guess. I don't participate in any of those sports. So I, don't know, I, know. I was like, <laughs> I'm yoga. I play rugby, so I was like. <laughs> You're tough. Is it yoga with a bar? Is that what it is? No, bar is, is ballet. Mm -hmm. Ballet workouts. Oh, bar. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think yoga is easier to do in the park. Yeah. I mean, it would essentially be mad Pilates if it was yeah. not. Yeah, that's what it would be. Yeah. So, yeah. Which don't underestimate. Because the good thing about Ellen is it's a local business, but I do also have a okay. yoga There was that teacher was on the corner that closed down. Mm -hmm. What was it called? Outlaw Yoga? Oh, there's another one. Um, I can like picture the logo. I know, we do. Too. I don't know. You don't want me there anyways. Would it, would it make sense maybe to engage both so you could target different demographic? I've been, I do yoga. Like have a bar class and a yoga class just depending on what end of the road you want to be on. Yeah. I don't know what- I think you want to do it all together yeah. since they'll probably be on a microphone. Oh, I think it's like a balance and stretch type class. Yeah. I don't know if they have an option. Something kind of more along those lines, like more catered toward. I guess a know. question we can yeah. ask is like ask Ellen and see like, would she be comfortable leading something like this that might not necessarily be bar, but something that's a little bit more approachable and just easier to do in the roadway? I still know. I mean, yeah, I was like, did, they all got real good at yeah. teaching bar without a yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could leave the class. Okay. I would. Ellen, yeah. I, I, I don't meet Ellen's standards. Ellen intimidates me because everyone is so professional there, but I could. <laughs> yeah, that's an option. Okay, yeah, I'd have to clear it with my studio. Yeah, I can work on, based off the, like, the what that we talked about, I can work on putting together almost like an objective statement of like, here's what we're trying to accomplish. Um, we can like discuss that. Um, maybe, um, you can come back with some of the possible events to tag into, tie into yeah. and what that timeline yeah. could look like. Yeah. Yeah. And so at every meeting, the, you guys will have the chance to talk about um, future agenda items too. So you, so as you're getting ready for the meeting next month, you'd be like, that was really fun and all, but we should have been talking about this, you know? And so you can see if you can generate interest to add that as an agenda item the next time. And, uh, and in, the mean, in the middle, of, in the, in the in the time between now and the next meeting, you'll get my email address here tomorrow when I send you some stuff. Um, feel free to send back things that, that you know, questions. With, what were we talking about when it was that? Or I had this other good idea or whatever. And I'll do my best to try to keep the momentum and conversation going and help you be prepared for success at your next meeting. One other like material action with like uh, outreach that I, I don't know if this would be a good idea, but just if I, should I like go ahead and get into the ear of some like administration at Heritage or Littleton and be like, hey, we're thinking, um, you know, sometime maybe late 2024, or early 2025, we want to do something to engage. Um, or we could do that with ACC as well, but to engage the student bodies here, um, like just like be aware of that and like 
look out for future communication from us. That'd be worthwhile. Yeah. And I think on par with the election coming up, it may be good. You know, some people want to be more involved with politics during that, so maybe fall would be a good time yeah. for that. I think we can hopefully get this first one accomplished um, over the summer, and then we can take what we've learned moving into the fall, like, because as yeah. high schoolers and college kids are starting up their fall semester, like, we can host an event um, sometime in maybe, like, September, October, if the timeline works. And one thing I just thought about, you kind of made me think of with the election coming up, is we could think about maybe, like, uh, this is unrelated, but like some type of like voter registration drive potentially for young people in Littleton in like, you know, August, September. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for all those seniors that are 18. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, yeah, that's a great idea. Brilliant. Hopefully they signed up when they got the driver's license. Okay. I think we can kind of move towards um, our last discussion topic, which uh, is to what opportunities um, to collaborate with other boards and committees are we thinking? Um, and we also don't have to dive into this right now if people want to reflect and look on the Littleton government website of what other um, boards and committees there are, because I know we've had the environmental environmental stewardship committee. They've showed up a couple times last year. Um, and I personally haven't been to any of the other committees, um, but I'm hoping to in the next couple of months just to see what they're working on and the things that they're doing. Um, but if anyone has any ones that they're like, we got to collaborate with them or we got to sit down with them, I was like, feel free to let me or let all of us know so we can maybe coordinate a time to have a joint meeting. I'd love to take the time to uh, take a peek around at other boards and then come back next month and say, this seems like a, a good fit. Okay, yeah. Does that work for everyone? I'm just kind of putting a pause on this till next month so we can figure out who people want to collaborate with? Okay, sweet. One thing that kind of comes to mind for me is um, I wonder if we could think about doing something with, uh, I'm not sure if this would be the Transportation Mobility Board or maybe some other type of board or committee about um, thinking about like street safety near schools, in other words, the unfortunate um, incident at Euclid. Um, it's very pertinent to um, both students as well as their parents. Um, so I think that's something our board could be involved in. So the, I'm, a, I'm the board liaison to the Transportation Mobility Board, and their current charge right now is um, around safe streets and the uh, Vision Zero, which is a national kind of, uh, well, actually international effort to um, move bike and pedestrian deaths down to zero. So they are spending the next couple of months thinking about what that would look like for the city and then in July they'll be making a presentation or having a joint meeting with the council on that issue. Um, and so uh, I guess what I'm trying to communicate is uh, the, that board might be the right board to meet with and, and they're focused right now very heavily on um, safety and so, so that's possible. You would like to have the group cut their average age in half. <laughs> um, is there anything anyone else has to say on our last topic of opportunities to collaborate with other board and committees? My only thought is that the um, I can't ever remember the Denver or the Littleton Business District. Oh, the LBC Little LBC. Business Chamber. Chamber, thank you. Um, it just feels like there is a lot of opportunity to collaborate with them on multiple things, including the event that we're talking yes. about having. I think you guys are going to work together on bringing the chamber to the next yeah, meeting. We're going to try and get them. Okay, so meeting. yeah, okay. We'll talk with them about yeah, this. They might also have other ideas that we haven't thought of regarding. Oh, I'm there. sorry. No, no, it's good. It's good to. There's a bunch of different organizations. It's yeah, kind of confusing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. If no one has anything else to say, we can move on to the comments and reports. Do we have anything from the, the staff? Well, I had about 10 things I wanted to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so just one announcement. On April 27th, South Platte Renew is doing their river cleanup. Um, Saturday, April 27th, 9 a.m. to 12 uh, to noon. Um, it, it'll, it'll be at Centennial Park in Inglewood. 
Um, South, South Platte Renew is the jointly operated sewer plant between the city of Littleton and the city of Inglewood. So this is our this is our group, um, but it's cleaning the South Platte. And so they, they provide all the equipment. They provide some snacks and, and you and your friends can come out and, and uh, pick up, remove litter from around the river. So what time did you say it was? So it, 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 it is 9 a.m. to noon and they're going to be meeting at Centennial Park in Inglewood. Um, if you want more information on it, it's the river cleanup, South Platte Renew River Cleanup. They do it every year. Last year they had to reschedule because of five inches of snow. <laughs> awesome. That's all I Our council liaison, do you have anything? I feel like I've said plenty. Okay. Um, as a chair, I don't have anything. Do you have anything to say as the vice chair or any, any comments or reports, Jack? I don't think I have anything to add that I haven't already said. But... Okay, then we'll open it up to the general members. Anyone have anything? I spoke a lot too. <laughs> okay, then I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you all. Yeah, that was great. Yes, thank you, everyone. I'm going to end the recording. There's my. Uh, so you have it. Yeah, it's like. <laughs>